Just a minute or two, we're still having people join uh, the Zoom. Be right back with you. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jeff Klein. I'm the Vice President of Operations. Uh, we're going to talk today about the Council Charter, charter Units. Um, not only am I uh, the Vice President of Operations for the board, but I'm also a Scoutmaster of a troop that's affected by the change that's coming with the United Methodist Church. Uh, we are going to ask that you wait and ask all of your questions at the end in the chat room, or we may be able to open it up if we still have some time left. We may cover some of the pieces that you're going to ask questions on here while we're going through the presentation. So next, I'm going to introduce Dave Harmon, and he is going to tell you a little bit about where we're at and why we're here. Hi, I'm Dave Harmon. I'm the Council Commissioner of Prairie Trail. Uh, one of the things I do in my professional life when a salesman comes to me and uh, has a problem, I ask him, so how did we get to where we are now? So the way this all started, background. Uh, clearly, you're aware you were abused by adult volunteers. Adult volunteers are vetted by the charter organization and by the BSA. The BSA wanted to help the abused scouts. One way to do that, they, they, could, they filed for bankruptcy. Uh, to secure and sustain financial help for these scouts. So national, local councils, the insurance companies were all brought together through this bankruptcy filing. The, the main point for the BSA was, after taking care of those that have been abused, is to preserve the BSA movement and mission. That's both for national and the local councils. So one group that I've not mentioned are the charter partners. The bankruptcy filing, the original one, was weak on protections for the charter partners. Certain current charter partners objected to the original bankruptcy filing. The current ruling by the bankruptcy court endorses stronger protections for charter partners, but the bankruptcy has not been fully approved yet, and the stronger protections have not taken effect. Charter partners, like the United Methodist Church, have chosen to limit their potential liabilities by not rechartering tax, troops, and crews. Instead, they are providing facility use agreements to allow units to continue to be at the churches, but they will not be charter partners. This is where the local councils, like the Great Trail Council, step in. Thanks, Dave. So there's a new uh, term that we're called, uh, could be calling council charter units. This is a relatively new concept uh, to Great Trail, but it's been done uh, before for other, other types of units. Think about our Pathfinder and our Scout Ridge units. A lot of those are council-sponsored units that we've had for years. 
Um, so this isn't anything that's brand new to us, but it is a little different in terms of its, its implementation process. So we at, at the board um, adopted a policy of, of how we were going to uh, charter council sponsored council charter units. Um, Jeff Klein as our vice president of operations will, will be our lead institutional head for the council. And with that, um, Jeff will also be able to appoint additional IHs. So there will be at least one per district. There may end up being more. Um, but right now we're taking any charter, any unit that is losing their charter partner. And there are more than just United Methodist units. We've had a couple other charter partners that have decided not to renew um, their units. So this is a little bit broader than the United Methodist Church, but a good proportion of, of the units that we are talking about are our United Methodist uh, sponsored units. Um, one of the benefits of moving to this process is that once we're done with it, the implementation, the speed at which we're able to process the things is going to be able to increase um, based upon how we're setting it up. And we're going to uh, turn that over to, uh, to Jeff to talk about how we're going to be doing, uh, creating the IHs in each one of the, uh, an IH for each one of the districts. Right, thanks Pat. So um, as, he, as Pat said, the, uh, the, the board did decide that uh, this is the path that we're going to go with this and I get to be your institutional head uh, over the entire council. However, each one of the districts, just like all of the committees that the district chair puts in place for uh, all of the other things that you do in the district, there will be a person or a few people that are appointed as the IH for each of the different districts here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna speed up our recharter process once we get to the recharter season. Uh, it's gonna make it easier for uh, all of the, the paperwork to go through for the council to register new scouts once we, we're right in the middle of Cub Scout recruiting season. So all of that paperwork will be able to process, be processed through much quicker, especially on the adult side when you have your new volunteers. The one thing that each unit is going to have to definitely do, and we'll talk about this as we go through here, is to check those background checks, the references that they list on the side of the application You've all been through that before, and you've all had to fill out those applications before and put those references on there. Well, now it's going to be the units, and then it'll come back to the, the district a little bit as to checking those people to make sure that they are people that we would like to have in scouting. So those people will be selected here in the near future. All of you will know. It'll be listed on your, your website for uh, your district, and you'll all know who those people are that you need to go through for each of those districts as your institutional head. Hey. Okay, as far as uh, how we're going to organize this, uh, your district executive, they're going to be your charter representative. Uh, district executive will appoint an existing registered volunteer as the delegate. It's not the top leader, but they got to be willing to complete the reference checks. I think we're going to try and pull up that form now. It's something new that I don't think that we implemented before. Okay, so the reference checks is something that we're going to be asking the, uh, the delegate to do uh, during the, uh, the process to make sure that the adults have gone through the proper vetting. Uh, they will approve the applications and charter renewals on a timely basis. Each unit will have an opportunity to approve their own leadership. Okay, so all of those, uh, the volunteer reference check and all of these forms or most of these forms are all fillable PDS. Um, so we're trying to make all of this uh, paperwork um, electronic and paper free. So all of these submissions can be done electronically and be typed into. So that nobody has to print them out and then scan them and send them in. We're trying to make this as efficient as we possibly can. Uh, so th there are a couple other pieces of uh, uh, reports that will be due. Um, the first one is uh, as we're moving away from the existing charter partners, we will need a property release document signed um, from each one of those, releasing all the assets of units. So primarily that we're talking about um, 
camping equipment, all your other Pinewood Derby tracks, all those kind of the items, um, any trailers that you might have, um, we will we'll need to make sure we document model, registration number, VIN, all those types of things with the, with the vehicle. Um, obviously the unit number, because the, the charter partner does own that unit number. And lastly, any funds located at the, uh, here at the, the Great Trail Scout Shop. And then also, um, there's an updated version of this that's, that we don't have up there, and it includes uh, the funds. So the, the checking and the savings accounts uh, related to the unit. So there's an updated version of that that uh, is up on the website right now. Um, but that, that we're looking for the charter partner to release all of that. In the case of the United Methodist Church, they basically all have agreed on to do that already. So it's not, it should not be any surprise to them. This is a fillable PDF that you can uh, simply download, fill in the information, take it to um, the, the leadership of that specific uh, United Methodist Church, get them to sign it, um, and then we move on to the next step. The next version is uh, the next step is bank accounts. Um, you will there's two forms on the, the website. I should also mention that all of this information is on a tab at the council website. So if you go to the council website. Click under resources, and then under resources, there's a, a section called council charter units. All of these documents live there. So you have the ability to download those um, and be able to utilize all those forms and anything that we need to update, all those kind of, all that information will be there for you. So the next one is a, a closing of bank accounts and opening of bank account forms. So there's a, a fillable PDF that's been set up for you to, to close your existing banking account statement with the because you you had been using the EIN from your church or what other other charter partner, and there's also a new form uh, uh, for opening your uh, a different account um, using the council's EIN. By utilizing the council's EIN, you are getting all of the you're getting all of the 501c3 status benefits. Um, the council will take care of filing all tax returns uh, related to this, and you'll have sales tax exemption. So all the benefits that you potentially had with your uh, uh, United Methodist Church in terms of tax situations, you'll have by uh, coming come to the council. The, the new unit, uh, the new account form is a fillable PDF. Um, it already has my signature, has the council EIN numbers, and all those kind of things. We're not dictating what bank you go to or what bank you use. If you want to continue to use the same bank you're currently using, that's fine with us um, in terms of that. The, the next um, forms that are on the, on the site are is an inventory of equipment. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do as by bringing uh, the unit as a council charter unit is we're going to make sure that we have proper insurance coverage for your unit equipment. So, but in order to have proper insurance, we need to have an inventory form that is done and completed um, on an annual basis. So every November 1st, or by November 1st of every year, we're going to ask that you complete and send this form in to the council. Uh, we'll accumulate those um, and then have enough time to uh, work with our insurance uh, agent to make sure we have coverage for that equipment starting on January 1st. So our renewal on our insurance is on a calendar year. So if we get your information by November 1st, we've got plenty of time to get that into the um, insurance company and make sure we can find that insurance by the, the first of the new year. Um, that also uh, includes trailers. Um, the one issue with the trailers is there's gonna be a fee for scout trailers. We're gonna, we believe that we're gonna be able to provide the equipment, uh, basic, uh, unit equipment coverage will be no charge because we believe that we can get that as a rider through our existing policy. But the troop trailers is going to be a charge. Um, we are estimating, and I am stressing estimating that that is going to be right around $150 a year to insure your troop trailer. Um, given the number of troop trailers that have been stolen over the last couple of years, that's, that's an inexpensive um, uh, insurance policy to make sure uh, as opposed to having to replace your trailer and all the equipment and those kind of things that is it and Jeff and believe me I and, know and Jeff can uh, attest to that because his troops trailer was one of the ones that was stolen so by having um, by having that uh, annual $150 fee uh, 
are approximately, we'll make sure that all of your uh, troop trailers are insured as well. Um, the last new fo last form, uh, that we'll, uh, two, two more forms, um, at the end of the calendar year, so as of December 31st, we're going to need you to do for perform a year-end checking and savings reconciliation on your accounts. And we've created a simple fillable PDF form for you basically just to show it, tell us how much you started with at the beginning of the year, how much you took in, how you spent it, and then reconciling that to your December 31st uh, bank account statements and submitting that to us. By uh, the units becoming council charter, you fall under our financial statements, our statement of financial position, and therefore our auditors are going to need to test certain uh, number of units of uh, financial records. So we're gonna need everybody to complete that for us by the end of January, uh, of, of this upcoming year in every January. So by every January 31st, you'll have to give, get us your year end, at December 31, uh, reconciled bank, bank information. That's so that we can appropriately account for it on our books. We're not looking at monitoring uh, what you're doing, but we just, by being a, count, uh, a council owned unit, uh, we need to show that on our financial information. Uh, the last form, and I know I've been going through a lot of forms, um, is the unit, the unit agreement form. So in the past you signed, there's been a charter uh, agreement that has taken place. This is very similar to what that charter uh, agreement was, but instead of it between, between the charter partner and the council, this is now between the council and the unit. Um, and we're not dictating where you go to camp or those kind of things. Um, for summer camp, uh, we, do, we are gonna require that you have a summer program. Um, and the summer program could be as much as you want it to be, or as little as sending someone to NYLT or to day camp. Um, but we're gonna to wanna to make sure any council chartered units do have a summer program. Uh, and we'll answer, about, I know there's probably a ton of questions related to the forms, but we'll get to those um, at the end here. Okay? The okay, we charter in this fall is gonna be basically the same process as what you've done for the past. The uh, commissioners, the commissioner court, it's one of their oldest uh, jobs and responsibility is making sure that there's a timely and orderly recharter account. So the recharter uh, end period is going to be December 31st as it was last year. We're all going to be chartering at the same time. The staggered approach has not been uh, continued on. So it's going to be the normal paperwork to pick up your packets at round table. Uh, you're going to need your youth roster. You're going to need your adult leadership roster. You need all of the appropriate white youth protection training for all registered adults. Now, I strongly suggest that if, if their uh, white BT2 is going to expire sometime in the first quarter of 2023, that they take it again. That might hold up the recharter process uh, for national when they go through and they check does the adult leader have the protection training? If it expires January 15th, and they don't post the charter until January 31st, there may be a problem. So I just suggest strongly that you make sure everyone has the youth protection training through the end of the first quarter. Uh, basic leadership training, nothing's changed there. Your leaders have to have on record that they have completed training for their position or else the unit will not be the charter. Other, two other forms that we that's already mentioned, that's the unit inventory form. And that's due November 1st. So uh, I would get on that as quickly as possible, start getting things listed and figuring out what assets you do have and what will be transferred from your existing charter partner to the council charter. And then another one that you're gonna need a, your treasurer to do, I would think your treasurer, but there's going to need to be a financial reconciliation that's going to be due to January 31st. And this is for the council. Uh, it's good quarterly financial management. And we need that for when we go through our audits here. And we'll be open for any other questions, but uh, just know that rechartering is not going to be all that different than it has been in years past. Okay. Good job. Okay, 
so we're talking about all of this today and giving you all of this information, and then we're just going to let you go and do it all in your own. No, we're not going to do that. So, of course, you've already heard about the website that's there um, that you can use to find out all these forms. Uh, there's a Q&A on there as well. Uh, so some of your basic questions should be able to be answered there. Your commissioner team that's on my right over this way here, that, uh, that the head guy over with the commissioners, they've, they're going to go through some training with this. They'll, they'll be knowledgeable about what to talk about, how this all is going to work. We have a few months to put all of this together before we get to the recharter process. Uh, so that's why we wanted to start all of this now as the scouting is ramping back up with the school year ramping back up. And then your district executives, they're there to also assist you. Again, they're going to be the, uh, the, the charter, uh, the, the uh, charter, reps. charter reps, here we go, then, for each of, the, uh, each of your units. So they're going to sign your paperwork as that recharter comes in this year. And they'll be the people that are signing that going forward. They'll be knowledgeable as well uh, on the process, on how to get everything transferred over. Uh, if you have any questions with that, go through those steps to try to find out the best way that you can solve that. And then if you have any other questions after that, uh, feel free to, to send in that message to your district executive. Uh, and if they can answer it, we will make sure that we get that question answered for you. So speaking of questions now, if you have any, uh, we ask that you type them into the chat and we'll be able to monitor them. Can, can they raise their hand and ask a question? Okay. Uh, the first question is the reference check form for existing volunteers or volunteers? It, this is so if, uh, if the volunteer is already registered with the BSA, this reference check uh, the, or the reference check form, I'm assuming is what you're referring to. That is just for new leaders uh, that are coming into the unit. So anytime there's a new um, application that'll be filled up by an adult, those are that will be uh, that will be uh, required to be submitted as well. Um, I think there was one other question. So you, you think about the vehicle one. So is it temporary or are you going to need them to find a new one uh, in the future? No, this is the solution to not have to jump around uh, and, and try to find a new charter partner. We don't want you to go out and try to find new charter partners today and then tomorrow or next week have them decide that they don't want to do this. Uh, this is the solution really to go forward and to make it so that you don't have to do any changing in the future again. Um, there's a few questions. Yeah. So um, one of the things that, one of the things that um, the council charter units that will not be able to own any vehicles. So if your unit owns vehicles currently, we will be insuring those vehicles or taking those vehicles as part of the uh, council charter unit. We'll, have, we'll be able to take trailers and other equipment, but we won't be insuring um, vehicles. Um, why the change from allowing us to find our own charter? What if we have a solution ready to go? Um, part of uh, a big part of the misconception is exists that the chartering process existed between the council and an organization. When that organization decides it no longer wants that that to take place um, or to be in that be, be in that chartering or, or agreement, it's beholden upon the council to seek out additional charter partners for the units, not for the units to go and look for charter partners. Um, one of the things that, because of the bankruptcy, and um, we really haven't said that all that much, is there's a reluctancy on a lot of charter partners when it's truly explained to them what the liabilities and uh, responsibilities of being a charter partner are for them being willing to take on that responsibilities. Um, there's a, um, there's also a, oh, there's a, uh, a lot of uh, talk right now that this may be something that will be uh, for everybody in the future that is only um, thought right now, that that could be a process that will be handled similar to the, um, but right as of right now, the, na the national organization can't talk about any changes in organization while the bankruptcy process is still in place. So the question is uh, that I mentioned that the DE will find a point the district level delegate. Yes, the, the district uh, district executive along with uh, the the district uh, chairman will find those people. That's. There's already discussion with some of those people to be in that place. 
Uh, we're still working with some of the other districts to make sure that we want to, we want to have all of the districts covered before we announce who those people are. But we uh, have been in discussion with those people already to take that role on. So um, if you're in, okay, we're clicking through those a little bit. We scroll back up to, I want to make sure, I don't want to make sure we've missed this. Um, when can you switch banks? You can start switching your banks right now. Um, one of the, none of the United Methodist Church units were chartered this year. So um, all of your memberships were renewed, the adult and youth registrations were renewed, but none of the charter agreements with any of the United Methodist Church units were, took place this year. So there was kind of an amended process that took place this past year. So there's no current charter for any of the UMC units. So you can begin the process of changing your bank accounts tomorrow if you want, um, and, and use utilizing those forms. So the, the, the URL for the is at, at the council website. So that is gtcbsa.org. Go down to the under the resource tab and under, look for under council charter units. Um, trailer licensing will be through the council eventually, uh, depending upon uh, as we bring in all the trailers. Um, we expect that all of the other council vehicles that the, that the council owns, the trailers, all uh, register in March. So we expect that that will probably get into that cycle, but it's probably going to take us some time to get into that rotation. Um, that will be or still be a responsibility of the unit to pay for the registration fee for the tanks for the, for the trailers. We have a new charter or agreement signed and we turn it into. We're not accepting the, the charter organization. So the only option of units right now that are losing their charter partners to become a council charter unit. But we need to get the coach for the trailers. Good question. I will have to look into that. The unit will be doing the first round of the background check process that is correct. Um, and then after that, it goes on to that the people that are appointed uh, in, in each of those districts to double check those pieces. So that criminal background check, they're not doing the background, they're doing the reference check. That's correct. So, they're, so the unit is completing the reference checks always, which they should have been doing um, even before, even non-council charter units. Those units should be calling those references and validating those references. So, so the, the charter fee, the, the charter, well, it, a couple of years ago, the charter fee changed to an insurance fee. So the insurance fee, that you are covered under insurance, but you're not chartered to uh, a UMC church. Does that, that make sense? Or parse, I'm guessing parsing parts here. But there's no charter agreement between any of the UMC churches that, that's in effect right now. The $75 and the increased fee that'll be every charter to $100 this upcoming year, that's purely an insurance fee. And I think that terminology changed, I want to say, a year or two ago. That's all the questions. Uh, why don't you go up to the uh, go up to the website and we'll just kind of click through. Uh, the, the couple of main documents quick. So, we'll yeah, we'll start with the agreement. We just want to make sure that um, this is the agreement that will be signed by the by the council as well as by the unit. Um, the unit responsibilities are all there. Um, we want when I know a lot of that there was some, some anxiety if, it, if you became a council uh, charter unit then we would tell you where you had to go to summer camp. All we're asking is that you actually go to summer camp, um, that, that you go to summer camp, day camp, um, participate uh, with the OA, have an, an OA elections, um, potentially send somebody to NYLT or attend Cub Scout, or Cub Scout resident program, whether that's in council or out of council. Um, one of the, one thing that, as uh, because of the volume of uh, applications that we expect to come in, um, we're going to ask that all adult leader applications be completed through the online process. So how that works is the adult leader goes in, fills in their application online. Uh, they they submit that that 
then goes to your charter rep delegate within your unit, who then does the reference checks um, or approves that, and then it passes on to the council for us to post it. So at the time when you're doing the reference checks, you can be typing the, that information in as you're talking to the reference checks, um, and then submit when, and then submit that form to the council so that once we get your reference checks and we have the application, we can process that adult leaders applicant, uh, application. And it's critical that we do that as timely as we possibly can because of uh, the criminal background check work that needs to be done um, so that we get that in a time of basis. We don't want adults participating and volunteering with the with the with your unit and not having had that criminal background check done. Uh, what is the SEI survey? So SEI stands for Summit Education Initiative. Um, it is a purely Summit County-based program, um, mostly of it, mostly in and around uh, Akron Public Schools, but several of the other uh, Summit County school systems are getting involved in it. Um, and what it does is it tracks uh, youth involvement and their education. They think of them as a big data bank. Um, so they track, so they try to track Billy um, Billy's in SEI database. They know that Billy attends um, uh, one of the schools in Akron. They know that Billy plays baseball and is in scouts. So they can statistically look at those samples of the kids and compare them against kids that are other kids that are in scouts, not in scouts, in baseball, all those kind of things. And it's a data collection um, area. We're using that data is then used to look for programs that have a proven impact. So all of us know that scouting changes kids. This is a way for us to get the statistical proof that it changes a young person. Um, and it's the source um, for a lot of funding that um, the, the foundations, the United Way, all within Summit County require this us to have this data in order to be able to even apply for any assistance. Can you clarify if you already have a release assumption of unit charter filled out or cannot change charter organization must be? That is correct. So, so if, if you have a release from your charter, you already have a release from your UMC, that's valid. Um, but you cannot move, the only option you have is to become a council charter unit. We're not moving to any other charter partners at this time. So we have to form our church. Church is not work. Um, each of the each of the units that is council charter unit, uh, council charter unit will have an affiliation or a facility use agreement um, that will be signed. Most of those will be with your existing uh, congregations that you're at. So mo mo almost all of the UMC churches that I've had conversation with want their scout units still to continue to meet there, and they want to have that continue to have that relationship with all of you. So there will be a facility and indemnity agreement. This is the most recent version. Um, there's been a couple of renditions of it. So we're gonna always try and have the most up-to-date, accurate one up on, the, up on the website for all of you to have. Um, and this one is specifically, I think, the setup for, for United Methodist Church. Any other questions? So, so John asked, how much detail can you we want in inventory? We don't need to know how many, so think about it this way. If you had to make an insurance claim on stuff that was in your closet at the, the church that you normally store your equipment at, you wouldn't probably make a claim for individual forks and spoons and ladles but you would for one for, for your Dutch ovens, your Coleman stoves, your tents, those kind of things. So we're not looking for in, in an exact inventory of every fork, knife, spoon, but of your major uh, pieces of equipment. So probably anything that's probably has an individual value of 20 bucks or more is probably what's something you want to have on inventory. Um, the facility form. The, I feel, uh, the, are you talking? Uh, I'm assuming when you ask for the facility form, yes, every year there will, there will need to be a facility use agreement signed on an annual basis. Um, part of that is because the new uh, uh, the facility 
will need a certificate of insurance. And we were, we send those out every March. So we want to make sure we have the updated certificate of liability coverage for those facilities. This is a unique situation by district. So. Can our scouts and leaders transfer to another troop in lieu of retirement with the retirement accounts? Not sure you why you want to do that. Um, but we can, we'll, we have to take that question offline later. Um, if you already had, if you had the one though, I, a question came in from Hannah. Uh, we filled out the facility use form from the church. Do we need to fill out the one you showed? No, you've got the one filled out from the UMC church. That one will suffice. Um, Dave, we recently applied for an EIN change bank accounts. Are required to do this again with the council EIN? Unfortunately, they you are. So, any got got a couple more. We still have some time to take more questions. If anybody else has more, um, this this video will get posted to the same website, the website area where. We, Word will get, get posted up on YouTube and there'll be a link on that council charter unit location so you can go back and review any of the things that we covered here tonight. But it started where they stated where they say survey is located the sense. Uh, that's the annual career with the charter. So, so the SDI survey is only for uh, units that are in Summit County. If you're outside of Summit County, you do not need to worry about that because Summit County Education Initiative. So if you're in Portage, Medina, Trumbull, or uh, Mahoney counties, that section of the agreement doesn't uh, pertain to you. Our new units are part of the charter with the council. Uh, um, new units are not re at this time required to, but we're also not starting a whole lot of units right now based upon um, the bankruptcy. Well, most of the, all we're doing is try, we're trying hard to keep our existing units. Um, most of you probably understand that after two years of uh, COVID, most of our existing units are struggling to uh, just to stay open. So our emphasis has not been on starting a whole lot of new units. Um, but any, uh, we haven't, the, the board hasn't set a policy on new units yet. But that could very well be part of where we go as we start to need new units um, coming out of the uh, coming out of COVID. John, the dates are the unit inventory form is due on November first. The financial reconciliation is going to be due January thirty first of twenty twenty three, and your recharter date is the same as it's been before. So all of that paperwork needs to be turned in in November, the November roundtable, so that we can recharter in December. Is this a national decision or a council decision? Um, it, it's both. Um, the, the, the decision by the uh, to for the UMC uh, congregations not to renew their units was done at a national level. Um, the, the implementation of how we're handling this is being handled differently at councils across the country, just like a lot of things are handled individually at, at differently um, by different councils. In talking with our attorneys and in talking with our account accounting folks, they thought this is the best long term solution for all of our existing units is to, was to do this. Um, well, that will have to, you know, we can't predict 100% what the future is, but all the indicators are this is the best process for the units. Richard, can you pull up on the go back to the website and under the Q&A, um, there's a one of if there's a timeline. Um, for kind of a, for implementation. I'll wait about it. So the, the steps for a smooth transition, oh, how is this all gonna work? This is all in chronological order for you. So things that need to be, when things need to be done by, all of those are in chronological order. So who owns the gear? Your unit is going to, nobody's going to take the, your gear from you 
Um, it's technically because the council is a char is chartering unit, it owns by the council. We don't want unit equipment. So we've got all the equipment that we need or want to already at Camp Spanatok and Samba and Camp Butler. Um, all the reason we're wanting to the, your unit inventory is to make sure that we have it properly insured and covered. Well, yeah, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your time tonight. I'm sure you're going to have more questions uh, come through. Uh, again, you, you have the, the people in your district that you can ask those questions with. You have your commissioner team that you can ask those questions with. Uh, and then you can ultimately email the council here with some of those questions as well. We're hoping for a smooth transition with this and look forward to a really easy recharter time once we get all of this worked out through this year. Um, and hopefully it, it goes smoothly even for this year. So again, thank you and uh, have a great night. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good night.